All right, so I'll just tell my story. I, um, so as you know, my name is Melanie and I'm the founder of Connect for Life. So my story, obviously, I grew up in Mississauga, not obviously, I grew up in Mississauga. I'm the oldest of four girls and I have wonderful parents that taught me all the great life uh, lessons, be polite, you know, live your life to the fullest, dream big, you know, reach for the stars, all that fun stuff. So I did that and, you know, be respectful, all those things. And I dreamt really big. I wanted to be a teacher. Everything I did growing up was to be a teacher. All my volunteer work, everything was. Um, I had the opportunity to attend private school here in Port Credit, went to Metro College and I loved art. Art was my life. I painted, I drew, I did everything and all my volunteer work was working with kids because I wanted to be this teacher. I remember being a young kid and teaching my stuffed animals and so of course hand in hand my life's goal was to be an art teacher and so when I was in high school my art teacher said to me I'm going to retire when I have a student that goes to York University for art. So I thought that's going to be me. And so of course I applied and my artwork was a little off the wall as my dad said. I did one of these art projects, I set a ladder on fire, you know I did the performance art, that sort of thing, a little off the wall but I just loved anything really wild. Um, and got into York and I went to university, loved it, did everything, drove my car around, you know, all the great things teenage young girls do, had boyfriends, my mom would say I was boy crazy, my younger sisters loved me because I blared the music, drove them around, I was a really cool sister, um, I was a good big sister I'd say, a role model, uh, had a lot of friends, you know, had a little too much fun sometimes, but you know, normal teenage stuff. Uh, in my fourth year of university, I started to have high headaches and I couldn't understand what was going on and to the point where I couldn't lift my head off the pillow. Went to the doctor, they said, oh, it's stress from university, it's okay, just here's some Tylenol. They did all these tests and they kept saying, oh, it's stress, it's stress. I was finally diagnosed with what they called was pseudotumor cerebri, which basically means you have a tumor but you don't have a tumor. Um, I had a, a job in the summer uh, at the YMCA teaching art. Loved it, had a great time, I was coaching soccer, really active, enjoying my life, free in the summer, you know, hanging out with my friends, great fun, driving on the 401, lost the vision in my left eye in the middle of traffic, didn't know what to do, somehow got to my mom's house, freaking out, I can't see, I can't see. She's like, what are you talking about? Anyways, long story short, lost the sight in my left eye, rushed to the hospital, like we have to do emergency eye surgery. What do you mean eye surgery? My parents, of course, are freaking out. What do you mean she can't see? Um, the doctors basically said we need to do this eye surgery. I kept saying don't touch my eyes, don't touch my eyes because here I am an art student. What do you mean eyes? First thing you think, you know? You have to be able to see to do art. Um, I went out of my room, out of the, the doctor's room with my boyfriend at the time and the doc, my parents say to the doctor, what would you do if this is your doctor, a daughter? The doctor says, if she doesn't have the surgery, she's going to be blind for life. As parents, what do you say? You're having the surgery. So obviously, as the good daughter, I have the surgery. So I had the surgery. After the surgery, I puking my brains up, and they think that uh, it's the anesthetic. Anyways, long story short, I'm lethargic and everything's going on, I get discharged from the hospital, I'm at the top of my parents' staircase, not feeling so great, my mom basically said, we have to go to the doctors to get you checked out. I'm like, mom, I don't feel so good, she's like, we have to go down the stairs. I said, okay, I think I'm going to go down on my bum, I'm really feeling dizzy. Uh, I sit at the top of the stairs, I'm going down, so I think. She's like, Melanie, move your left side. I said, I am, what do you think I am, stupid? I would never talk to my mom that way normally. 
And she's like, Melanie, move your left side. I said, I am. I had a stroke at the top of the stairs. I fast forward, uh, they rushed me to the hospital. I had developed two large blood clots in my brain uh, that left me, uh, went into a coma for two weeks, left me completely paralyzed on the left side and, legal, side and legally blind. I was in a coma for two weeks. They didn't think I would live. My parents were told that I was, they should plan my funeral. My family said, you don't know her, she's stubborn. I like to say determined because it sounds much better. Um, Everybody says, you know, people can't hear you when you're in a coma. That's not true. I heard everything everybody said to me in the coma. My dad put a Walkman on me so I could listen to music. I remember all the songs that played. I remember all everybody's confessions to me when I was supposedly dying. Uh, my sister confessed to me that she stole my peach gum. I had a package from Costco of peach gum. Oh, I love you, please wake up. I will buy you another package of peach gum. I heard everybody's, you know, oh please, we need you, this and the other, my mom sobbing. Hi mom, I love you. <laughs> and. Um, everybody's confessions and stories about how much they loved me and how I should fight. My dad is Italian. He's like, you're Italian style, you need to fight like hell. And I, in the second in North America that had a procedure where they inserted one million units of blood thinner into my growing that dissolved uh, the blood clots and saved my life and then the second to survive, which is great. I woke up though not being able to see anything and completely paralyzed. So of course that's very scary and you think your whole life is over and you think, oh my goodness, now what? Well now what, what happened was months and months of rehab, learning to do everything over again, learning to walk, learning to dress yourself, learning to feed yourself. There's so many stories I could share with you about catastrophes and stories that are funny, sad, humorous. My mom and dad went through hell and back and my sisters. There's so many stories that I'm sure many of us that we've heard today go through the trials and tribulations but all I kept saying is I have to get back to normal whatever normal is all I knew was that I wanted my life back but what I did learn was that you fight and you work hard towards getting what you want and what I wanted was to walk and I walked first with a cane well in a wheelchair for quite a while then with a quad cane, then with a single cane, and now walking with my white cane, because after all the physio, I had to learn how to live my life independently as a person legally blind. That's great. So then what? Well, again, that dream of being a teacher. I applied to teacher's college because I'm stubborn, even though I was told, you're disabled, you need to stay home. What do you mean, I'm 21, I don't want to stay home. I applied to Teachers College. They had to give me the interview because all of my grades were great. My experience was fantastic. So this is how my interview went. How are you going to do this with your disability and how are you going to do that with your disability? I said, I thought this interview was about my abilities and not my disabilities. And they said, oh, well, I got in and on my first day of Teachers College, my professor said, you'll be gone by Christmas. I said, no, I won't. I graduated at the top of my class with honors and I'm the first legally blind teacher to graduate in Ontario which is great, thank you. It's great accomplishment and I'm very, very proud of it, but nobody wants to hire a blind teacher, another obstacle. However, that doesn't stop me because I am determined, you like that word mom? Not stubborn, determined. Um, and I started a program, uh, a, le a learning center for adults with disabilities to teach them life skills because I don't want anyone to go through what I went through. After my stroke, again, hearing over and over again, you're disabled, you need to stay home. You don't want to go through that. You want to get your independence back. You want to be independent. You want to achieve all your goals because there is life after disability. There is so much to achieve. There's so much to accomplish. Um, so I started the Learning Center, and I helped individuals with disabilities achieve their goals. And that was a huge endeavor, and I'm so proud of it. It closed in 2013, but it was the stepping stone of Connect for Life. And again, Connect for Life is my new passion and ambition to continue my dream and flight to help other individuals with disabilities achieve those dreams and goals because there is so many out there, so many dreams to be reached 
and each individual has gifts to share and goals to achieve and I want to be a part of each and every one of them to help them reach those goals. So that's my story and thank you so much for listening. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for attending today and being a part of our special day. This is the first year for Voices for Inspiration. Um, it's been a great success. I want to thank all of our speakers, all of our exhibitors, all of our volunteers and everybody for coming. And again, thank you for being a part of Connect for Life.